And it's important to, to note when you install the rod that the rod is threaded onto the master cylinder itself uh, the same amount of threads as the hind joint is threaded into the other end. So we're going to thread the rod completely down uh, as far as it goes onto the master cylinder's rod, the hex portion onto the master cylinder's rod, and then we will attach it to the pedal and adjust the pedal up from that point, making sure that the rod coming out of the master doesn't turn um, because it can spin freely so you would hold the threaded rod while you turn the hex portion uh, to keep adjustment even on both ends of the hex portion of the rod. Yeah, there's a jam nut on both ends. Once you make your final adjustment, you know, you would lock the, the jam nuts down, but for now, uh, jam nuts can stay loose. We're adjusting here uh, to basically bring the pedal up. Once we get everything hooked up, we're gonna bring the pedal up fairly high for the bleeding process. And then once you actually hook the line to the slave and you're ready to start driving or testing the clutch disengagement, you would want to adjust the pedal back down more to the middle or lower range of its travel and then slowly adjust your way back out. Uh, but like I said, for bleeding purposes, we want to utilize as much of the stroke as the master offers. So we're gonna adjust the pedal to near the top of its travel for right now and we're going to show you how to bleed with just the master you know itself not attached to the slave yet. After the bleeding process it's vital to adjust your rod back to the shortest length. This is where your pedal is closest to the floor. If your rod is too long it will damage the clutch. You must start with the rod at its lowest adjustment then slowly adjust outward bringing the pedal up closer to the driver. See the instructions for final adjustment. I would say it's the preferred way because you can uh, go ahead and isolate just the one component, which is the master itself. We use this cheaper fluid because Tilton, the manufacturer of the cylinder itself on our kit, they recommend that we use this as opposed to some of the uh, performance oriented fluids that have a higher boiling point uh, or like a DOT5 fluid uh, because they say that this particular fluid has better lubricating properties. Um, basically what that means is uh, this is gonna offer better protection for the cylinder wall of the master cylinder or the piston would potentially uh, scuff or cause damage. So this fluid lubricates the piston better. So we're gonna carefully pour the fluid in. You can hear some, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but some air is bubbling out as it is, you know, this fluid is settling in place of the cylinder. Um, so you may have to top it off a time or two, but someone is going to go inside the car and push the pedal as I go under the car and push the piston of the quick disconnect in. So basically the quick disconnect keeps fluid from leaking out of the system when it's disconnected. It has a plunger or a piston that would stop the, the orifice. So by taking a small screwdriver, we're going to push that plunger in and allow a path for air and, and then fluid to escape the end of the master's line. Which, by bleeding it this way, it's going to be much quicker than if you just hook the line up to the slave if this car had everything installed. If you just plug it up, then you're going to have an entire system full of air that has to work its way all the way through the slave. All right, so we've got the end of our line here. You can see there's a piston or a plunger here which can be pushed in easily. You see I'm pushing it in and out right here. Uh, now this is the connection of an LS style or a C5 or you know a lot of other applications. Uh, so bleeding the master this way makes for a lot easier process. So I'm going to push the, the piston in and hold it and now Jesse's going to push the pedal to the floor. Yeah go ahead slowly. Once you get it pressed down, just hold it. Okay, so we got nothing out. We're gonna let go of the plunger, the piston or the plunger here, and now Jesse's gonna let the pedal return to the top. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So you can see we're getting a little fluid out now. Okay, now back up. Are you up? I'm up. 
One more time. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and let it up. Okay. I'm going to push the piston in now. So go ahead and push the pedal to the floor and hold it. Okay, let it back up. Now, does the pedal feel any differently? Okay, I'm gonna try something. I'm just gonna by hand push it, and you'll notice that the pedal will start to have a little pressure. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna pump, pump the pedal just to the point where we feel that it feels like there may be some pressure starting to happen. So we're gonna just pump the, the soft or the spongy area. A lot of times, if you do this, what little bit of air is left will work its way out. And you'll notice the pedal is gradually, the, the free play is gradually getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Now we can't put a lot of pressure on it because that valve at the end of the line is closed. So now we're, we're all the way up, we're bled. The master would be completely bled at this point. And if we push the pedal really hard, we may bust the line or bend the rod or something along that, those lines. So that's why I'm just barely pushing it with my hand. And you can see the master is fully bled. Yeah, as, as we're doing that, what it's doing is it's working the last of what little bit of air would have been in the system. They will be bubbling out the reservoir. So even as we're doing that, even though fluid's not going out onto the, the into our pan, because that air is coming out, the fluid level could be going down. So you still want to check and make sure that your reservoir stays, you know, full, or at least fluid that you can see. Leveled our fluid up to about halfway in the reservoir. And then when we put our cap back in, there's this black rubber piece. This piece here, we're gonna drop it in. It's kinda acts as the seal for the cap. So if you fill your reservoir up, then when you put this in, it's gonna displace enough fluid that it's gonna overflow and you know pour out everywhere under your, into your engine bay. So you don't want to fill the reservoir much more than about half so that when you put this in, the level will rise up to the full position. We'll clean this guy off a little bit. Now, if you plugged it up to your slave cylinder and your slave cylinder was the same slave cylinder you've been running, it would already have fluid in it. So you would technically be finished unless you wanted to go ahead and kind of flush the fluid in that slave out which then you could continue the bleeding process through the bleeder of the slave cylinder itself. That's uh, pretty much it.